Happy Thursday. Praise the Lord. So good. So let me know that you can hear me. I'm always concerned about that, that my connection's good, that it's picking up my earbud. So today's going to be a little different. Um, I felt like the Lord really wanted me to be able to share a stellarium and go through what's going on right now in the heavens. And so the problem is, good morning. Hi, Melanie. Are you hearing me good? Um, hearing me well? Um so the challenge is I don't know how to do that on my phone and do that well. So then I wanted to be able to do it um, from my computer and do a live this morning, but I'm not able to do the share the screen function and, and all that. So what's going to happen is I'm going to give you a little bit of a precursor and then I'm going to go ahead and record the, the kind of this, this teaching, this primary thing, the Lord, because I really want to show you the visuals. I feel like that's important. Um, and if you're not familiar with Stellarium, because what God is doing right now, and like, you know, this morning, as I was like, Lord, what is it on your heart for your people this morning? It's like that, that message of look up, look up. Like he put the signs in the heaven to be the, he put the stars and the sun and the moon and the heavens to be a signs to us, right? Signs about what he's doing, signs about his coming. And so, hi from Scotland. Oh my goodness. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning, Melody. Yeah, praise God. Yay, I'm so excited to have someone from Scotland. So my husband's heritage is from Scotland. Scotland. Um, that's probably terrible. Sorry if that's a bad uh, <laughs> bad way to say that. Um, praise the Lord. Uh, but I, my, my background is from, um, first of all, my dad, his is French. So the French Huguenots uh, came over to America um, to get away from religious persecution that was happening. And so my, my maiden name is Marino, M-A-R-I-E-N-A-U. New Orleans. Oh, I love it. I love being able to see where you guys are from. It's so exciting. So yeah, tell me where you guys are from. This is so cool. I just love you guys that we get to be a body. So of all the things we do when we, we like blaspheme technology, which I totally, it usually um, confounds me, <laughs> but I'm thankful because like how else would we get to connect? So Utah, oh, seriously, that's so exciting. All right. So I just really appreciate that the Lord is drawing you to listen to this today. So praise the Lord, Alabama, Tennessee. Come on, we're representing. Um, okay. So anyway, so Fr French, um, France um, is my father primarily. And then my mom, um, her dad it came from both Germany. Her maiden name was Eiltz. Sounds German, right? And then my, um, on her mom's side was Norwegian. So I've got that Norwegian thing going on too. And she literally used to say, oof, da. So <laughs> anyway, so um, we are, my husband really wanted to do the 23 and Me a couple of years ago. So I know there's a good controversy around all that. Geraldine, you're from Omaha too. That's where we are. Geraldine, let me just invite you to come to Foley. We have offices in the elevator in the old market. Um so we love to have people come visit us and pray together. So I just want to invite you, um, just message me, like do a private message. But then also we are opening a boutique, our very first storefront in the old market in Omaha um, to share this, this awesome thing that God's doing with Foley. Um, and just so you know, so Foley is the healer our Lord is. And um, it was a vision the Lord gave my best friend, Krista, and she might join us in a little bit. But um, I can't remember this is quite funky today. Um, so Lord gave Krista a vision for a pair of sandals and an essential oils. And so we literally, in the next couple of months, are launching this first, the world's first essential oil sandal. So sandals that have an oil that comes up out of the heel. And it's a specific blend of oils that the Lord gave us drop by drop by drop. And the purpose of it, he said, is to put on your armor. Um, so God, you know, the enemy is coming against us every way he can with all of this 
the toxins uh, in the air, in our, you know, the food, um, all of that kind of stuff that the enemy's doing. And so, of course, the Lord knows and the Lord's got a response to that, right? Oop, I just turned my thingy majiggy off here. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Um, so that's what Foley is. So the sandal that allows you to basically continually receive essential oils, this very specific blend, and all essential oils are, I didn't mean to go into this, but I just will since I invited Gerilyn. Um, so what essential oils are, all they really are is plant extracts. So there's plants, God created the plants, he had a purpose for the plants. Um, and so it's like that lost understanding of what each plant does and the purpose. And we know biblically, there's so many examples of oils being used. And so the Lord is doing that with us. And I never, I'm an industrial engineer by background, um, professional MBA, a business efficiency expert. Um, but so I never expected to be opening an essential oils company and having this patented footwear. So it literally got patented in October of this past year um, during the fall feast. And the patent number is 11771173. So I'm like, come on, Lord. It's so good. World's first ever anointed sandals that God's done. So, and his heart is to be able to absorb the oils so that literally this formulation um, is meant to, it's, and I'll just tell you, it's cassia, cinnamon bark, hyssop, and spikenard in this, like the Holy Spirit gave us drop by drop by drop of this. And then it's in a rose hip carrier to make it safe for, because plant, plant extracts are super, super um, potent. Anyways, um, and so the rose hip allows it to be safe for your body to absorb continually. But these four oils work together to clean out the cells of your body, to, to basically deprogram them, and then to reprogram them according to God's design. Okay, come on. Only God can do that. Like, come on. Yep, for the healing of the nations. Exactly. And Melanie, she's gotten some of our oils and she's like, it smells so beautiful like heaven. I love mine. Yeah, it's the primary scent is cinnamon. So anyway, I, I didn't mean to go into that, but um, it's really, really amazing. So this is not an infomercial, but what I will say is anything the Lord has asked me to do, it's all about him. It's all about glorifying him. It's his purposes and his plans. So you know, at this point, my, my partner and I, um, Krista, like we aren't taking a salary. Um, this, we're, this is costing us something in terms of our family and all of that and time and resources and everything to do this, but we just trust the Lord. And we know that people have begun to use it and are seeing incredible things. So only God, it's all his glory, but people are receiving healing. So, so many testimonies that we've gotten so we know this is him. We know that it's working. Um, I'm not claiming that it's going to heal everybody from everything, but according to whatever the Lord wants to do, he's restoring his ancient paths. And that includes the natural things he gave us. Okay. So praise the Lord. Just sharing that. So Gerilyn, come and visit us. We're actually, our little boutique will be open next Thursday at the table on 1122 Howard Street. I love that. I love numbers. God speaks to me in numbers. So 1122 Howard Um Anyways, and for those folks who can't join us in Omaha, you can go to our um, website, foleyoil.com, T-H-O-L-I oil.com, foleyoil.com. So praise the Lord. Yes. Okay. Sue Paul, let's get to it. Let's get to what the Lord's speaking about this morning. So I do want to talk about that. Um, and then again, so if you joined, I'm going to, to, we're going to do a quick live and I want to share some things, but I'm then going to record a teaching and upload it because I want to share with you visuals of what's happening um, it's because it's really important. So, and I couldn't figure out how to do it uh, uh, over, I'm using my phone right now and with being able to share screenshots and stuff. So we're just going to do it like this. Um, but the first thing, so the first thing is the first thing. So I'm going to get to that and then please watch the video um, later, a little bit later today. Usually it takes a little bit of time to upload. Um, or I'll go into uh, some detail. So I'm going to start with Jesus. Okay. Cause we need to start with Jesus because none of this matters. None of it matters knowing what's coming on the earth. If we don't know him, if our, um, if our hearts aren't tuned to his, if we're not listening to hear his voice. Okay. So let's start with Jesus. Um, so in the name of Jesus, 
So this was something I wrote in my little, my very special book that when the, the Lord kind of dropped this into my heart, this understanding. So my background is came out, came out of or grew up in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, super great foundation biblically. And I love my church body and God's people are there. And he's awakening hearts just like he awoke in my heart to know the times we're living in. So I bless them. Um, there's some of the doctrine of our Lutheran church that would say we're already living in the millennial kingdom, which if you look around, we're not. This is still the enemy's camp. This is still um, owned by the God of this world, Satan. Um, so, so there's some things that I'm like, my heart is not in agreement with based on scripture. But um, I... 10 years ago was filled with Holy spirit received the second baptism. Baptism of water is good. Praise the Lord. We need it. It's really, really good. But there is a second baptism that the Bible talks about in John. And I think it's John. Uh, I don't have it in front of me, but it talks about, have you received Holy spirit? The disciples say, have you received Holy spirit? And no, we haven't. So then they laid the hands on and they received Holy spirits by the evidence of speaking in tongues. Um, you don't have to speak in tongues in order to be, um, in order to say that you're spirit filled and my friend just walked in and um, she was spirit filled, but it was years before she really received her prayer language. It didn't mean that she wasn't a hundred percent spirit filled to begin with. The Lord filled her. It's just that there was this awakening in her heart to begin speaking in tongues. So just letting you know, um, there's not a requirement there if, based on my understanding of what scripture says. So um, all that to say, as we're taught, we have to understand that we have a paradigm we live within, right? We live, hi, Carla, good morning. We live within a paradigm. And whether we understand it or not, we all have a set of beliefs that we've been taught, raised under, and those shape how we look at the world. So as a Lutheran, I know, I, I always knew, well, everything is done through Jesus, right? I knew that. But I didn't understand the mechanics of what, why we pray the way we pray. And then when I became spirit filled and realized, oh my goodness, God never stopped doing miracles. He's, st he's still the same God yesterday, today, forever. And we began praying for people. We began praying for people and seeing people healed in Jesus name. I, you know, the Lord was like helping me to understand that. So I want to start with this. I'm starting with this today and then I'm going to go to the signs in the heavens just so you guys can follow back with me. So this is what I wrote in my little special book. This was December of 2016. So in the name of Jesus. So it doesn't mean when we pray, be healed in Jesus name. Or, you know, I pray this in Jesus name. I pray blessing over you in Jesus name. It doesn't mean that I'm pleading with Jesus or God to answer my prayer, okay? So to be clear, it's not what it means. And I feel like as I was raised in the paradigm, the concepts that I held, that's what I understood. Like, I'm gonna pray and ask the Lord to do something. Oh, do it, Lord. Ugh. You know, and if I just pray hard enough, maybe I can convince him to do something. So that's not, that's an error. So what I what I wrote here is, it is, so here's the truth of when we pray in Jesus name, what this looks like. Okay. Lord gave me a different paradigm. He gave me a different picture of what this looks like. It says, if Jesus gave me a scroll with his signet seal on it, and a signet seal is when the king would write something, he would write an, like an edict. He would say, thus says the king, this is what's going to happen, right? This is what I say. And biblically, we see that over and over again. Then he would give it to his messenger, but he would seal it with his signet ring. There'd be a seal and he'd put his ring in it. And that ring was the seal of the king. And then that messenger was holding that scroll and they carried with them all authority from the king. Does that make sense? Okay. So it is as if Jesus gave me a scroll with his signet seal and sent me out as his messenger he has given me his orders. I carry all his authority as I go out. Okay, that's exciting. Because we know the word, the word says that he has given us all authority, right? Because he, he died, he rose again. During that period, he was in hell. He took the keys back from Satan. He, he won the victory. So then he rose again, right? 
he went to heaven is seated at the right hand of God, but he left us the keys. He gave us authority back because Adam had relinquished it at the time of the fall because he was deceived by Satan because Satan deceives the father of lies. He has no truth in him. He deceived Adam. Jesus took the keys, he gave them to us. Does this make sense? Okay. So that's the truth of this signet seal. We are given his seal. We carry with him in the name of Jesus. We carry the scroll that gives us all authority as if the king himself were right there. The second thing is, I am more than his servant. You are more than his servant. You are more than Jesus's servant or even his friend. And I want to pause and say, as a little girl in the Lutheran church singing, my favorite song was, what a friend we have in Jesus. That was my favorite song. Favorite, favorite song. I love to sing that song. And as a little girl, and believing, even though in my paradigm, in my, my you know, this, this church I was growing up in, he, the, God, the Lord, the God that I knew, he was a faraway God. And I knew we came together on Sunday mornings and we would sing to him and we would talk about him. But he was a faraway God that I didn't know. But I love that song because even as a little girl, it was a promise of something that he was my friend. And what's a friend? A friend is someone who knows you. A friend is someone you do life with. They have your back. They'll go into battle with you, right? And so, so this is what the Lord downloaded in my heart, that I am more than his servant, and I am even more than his friend. So uh, the, the understanding I got in that this, this moment was that even beyond servant friend, right? There's a place of being a daughter or a son of the king, right? Because our inheritance is in him. I am who he says that I am. I am his. I am a daughter of the most high God. You're a son of the most high God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. So moving from servant, and there's a scripture that says, well done, good and faithful servant. And I do remember a time as I was beginning to step into the things of God. And I was, it was like, my heart's cry was, Lord, I just want you at the end of my life to be able to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Like that used to be enough for me. And then I moved to the place, I really want to be Jesus's friend. Like, what, how could I do that? You know, what, what does that look like? Lord, teach me about that. Then I, you know, moving into this revelation of not only that, but because we're a son and a daughter, and once we know who we are, there's nothing we have to do, right? Because we have sons and daughters. If you're a parent, you have sons and daughters, right? And you know that when they're born to you, they automatically receive everything and you would give your life for them. They automatically receive everything that you have. It's all theirs, right? I remember our first born, Xander, and being at the hospital and giving birth and seeing this little life look at me and seeing like my eyes look back at me because he looked just like me and being like, oh my gosh, like this is a part of me is here. A part of me now lives outside my body. A part of my heart is now, now not even within me. It's here it is. I'm looking at him and taking him home into our home. He had everything became his, everything we had became his. So that's the picture that God has for us is that when we realize who we are in him, then we walk, we step into the inheritance that was always ours. Beyond servant, beyond friend, son or daughter, it's a mat automatic. There's nothing we have to do to earn it. My son didn't earn anything. He just became our son. I can't earn that place in God's kingdom. I Either I am who he says he is or I'm not. And so I am a daughter of the king. I receive that inheritance. Okay. But then it gets even better. Oh my goodness. It gets even better because then this is what I wrote. Just as a bride changes her name, my name becomes Rachel Jesus, right? As I am remade into the image of his bride, that's what we're all working towards, right? That's what we want. Don't we in the, in our heart of hearts, in the depths of our hearts, 
when we read those scriptures that talk about the bride made ready, the bride that meets her groom, I'm going to get emotional, meets her groom in the heavens and then is welcomed into the marriage supper. Like, come on. So to be his bride, my name has changed from Rachel to Rachel Jesus, <laughs> Rachel Yeshua. I have all the authority of Jesus because I am his. All right, so let me go back to the beginning. So when we pray in Jesus' name, we aren't just praying a prayer of, please, Lord, help me. Please, Lord, do what I say. Legitimately, the reality of the paradigm I want you to get in your heart is this. It's as if Jesus himself is handing you a scroll and he's saying, I am giving you all authority on heaven and earth because you are mine. I bought you with a price. You're not just my servant. You're not just my friend. We're not just sons and daughters. We are his bride made ready. That's what he's doing in us. So we can know when we pray, be healed in Jesus name. The belief is when we, I'm telling you, I'm saying to you, like, this is what changes everything when you pray and the effectiveness of your prayers. Uh, there's a scripture that talks about um, the effective prayer of the saint. I can't remember what it is. If somebody remembers, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we just praise you right now. We thank you that your holiness is amongst us and that you are good. We bind every spirit that would come against this message, every spirit that would want to bring in um, any kind of message that's not from you. This is really important this morning for those listening to hear what I'm saying to you. There's a place where each of us begins to rise up into our authority in him. This is what the enemy has worked so hard to prevent for 6,000 years. He not only came and stole the promise from Eve and from Adam, he's been stealing it all along. This is what's happening in us today is that the Lord is coming within us. He is saying to us, children, bride, I have given you the authority on the earth rise up into the stature of the fullness of who you are in Jesus name. Woo. Come on. Rise up into the fullness of the stature of who you are as mine, as my bride. So that when we begin to pray in our groom's name, in Yeshua's name and Yeshua, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's just the Hebrew, um, enunciation of his name because in Hebrew there's no J. So it's really a pollution, that English pollution or the Roman pollution or whatever of his name. And so if, when you pray in Jesus name, people are healed and things happen. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with that. I just have a stirring in my heart as I have wanted to learn God's ways and his, his um, ancient paths and all of that. The Lord's led me to um, do some study of Hebrew and it's, it's so beautiful. And so Yeshua, so either Jesus or Yeshua, it's the, what are we really praying from? He count, it's in those words, like that's the picture that we need to hold in our hearts is he, we're holding his scroll. He's sealed it. He sealed our hearts with his signet and wherever we go, we're carrying all the authority of the king. And when we pray, we're praying thy kingdom that come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heavens. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Father God. Sorry, Sarah, that your internet's not working well. Praise the Lord. All right. So I pray that you receive that, that you meditate on that. You know, there's, we, the Lord's given all of us different keys, right? So you're here today receiving from one key that I have been given. And, but there are certain keys that can change everything. And this is one of them. This is one of them that when we know who we are, and then we say, Lord, 
I want to be like Jesus, that he only did what he saw his father doing. He only said what he heard his father saying. He walked the earth with those eyes, looking through the eyes of the Lord, this heavenly perspective. And so operating out of that, that if we, if we, Say, Lord, I need you to do a work in me because we can't do it ourselves. We can go through surrender. In surrender, our part is surrender, loving him. His part is coming in with the power of Holy Spirit to make us new, endeavoring to, whatever we do, walk the earth according to the way Jesus walked. We begin to release the kingdom. All right. So in the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about this promise of the kingdom coming, that it's not going to come through observation. Look, there it is. Or look, there it is. It's going to come here first. It's going to come internally within us. How does that happen? I'm giving you a key today. Okay. This is so important. I'm giving you a key that says, here's how the kingdom happens within you. When you get a revelation of what I'm saying, that Jesus because he took the keys back and he's given us to given them to us as his not just servant, not just friend, not just a daughter or son, but his bride, we take on his name. And now there's no two, right? Because when the two are married, the two become one. We begin to speak in his name. That doesn't mean that I ever become God. Okay, I'm not saying that. I'm saying Jesus in me is the hope of glory. Jesus in me is the promise of his kingdom coming forth on the earth at this time. Putting uh, up a standard, dropping the plumb line down in our own lives. Lord, drop the plumb line down in within me that I live in a manner that is beyond reproach, that I have no mixture in me, right? Only God can do that. I cannot do that. And yes, I am in this broken world where the waves are crashing and the wind is blowing and I'm bombarded, you know, moment by moment by moment, but uh, by this, by Satan and this world, right? But there's a way to live where he clothes us in righteousness as though we are putting on our armor and we go about walking like Jesus walked. He renews our vision that we see what God is doing and we see what he is saying and we hear what Jesus, we hear all of it, what Jesus is saying, what God is saying. That's our perspective and where we're living out of. Thank you, Lord. And then the kingdom begins to come within us. And then we begin to change what is happening outside of us, right? Because there is a place where we are able to bring his kingdom that prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What does that look like? If we become a vessel that's fully given over to the release of his kingdom, then we're co-laboring with him and the angelic host to bring his kingdom forth. I hope I'm talking to somebody here. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. So for die says there is a devil inside of you. Father God, I rebuke that. In Jesus' name, there is no devil in me. Father God, Jesus is the king. There's holiness and righteous in me because of the work that God has done. And that is his heart for every single one of his children to bring his law, to bring his truth, to bring his mercy. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Um, I want to share something else with you really quickly. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, I was going through the grocery line once a number of years back and um, I see in the spirit. And so what that means is that not all the time, not a hundred percent of the time. And I've even learned the Lord's taught me to be able to dial it up or dial it down. Um, I'm sure people have greater gifts than I do all of that, but seeing in the spirit, I saw and perceived in the spirit the checkout lady, it was like two people back that she, there was demonic happening there and she was actually cursing me because here's the thing. 
there is something in us. Those that know who we are in him, there is a light in us that's a very real thing that the enemy can perceive. Okay? That the demonic can perceive all of it. And so she was cursing me. I could feel it and see that happening. And I just said to the Lord, like, I don't know what to do with that. Like, what is going on? And the Lord said, bless her. And I'm like, what? Like, what? Right? So um, our carnal minds are, are at enmity with God. My best understanding will lead me nowhere. His word says, bless those that curse you. So I bless anyone who's jumped on to curse me. I bless you in Jesus' name. In the name of Yeshua, I bless you because that is our blessing is the disarming, right? Because I cannot protect myself. Jesus, Father God, is my only protector. He is my only help in trouble. I am just a little girl sitting on Papa's lap. I'm just a dumb little sheep that he, the shepherd just loves. He's my protector. And so I don't have to protect myself. That's a key. That's another key. Cause now I just get to be Rachel Jesus. I just get to be Rachel with Jesus inside of me taking on his name, bearing his image, trusting in him, living according to his ways and his purposes, repenting when I get outside of it, forgiving quickly anyone that would come in to bring offense, forgive, repent, and walk in the spirit. That's, that's it. That's like, that's the game. And then the enemy loses his ground in our life. He loses the ground in your life when you begin to rise up into the authority of who Jesus made you to be. Then the enemy of your soul who came to steal, kill, and destroy loses ground in your life. Praise the Lord. And that is the time we're living in where it's time for him to lose ground in our lives. It's time for the Lord God to bring his truth. Praise the Lord. Okay, so thank you, Lord. All right, so let me briefly share with you um, someone on the live a couple days ago asked the question. I wrote it, wrote it down. So let me go find it in my journal. This is the question. Switching gears. Okay, so I'm switching gears to like the signs in the heavens and all that. The question was around, I've always been taught that the first day of the new year starts on the new moon. Help me understand that. And I understand what you're saying because as I, even 10 years ago, Feel the Holy Spirit really began reading God's word, especially the Old Testament with those eyes. The Holy Spirit is the great teacher, um, helping us to see way more than we could ever see, to see truth. And I, I read what you read. And um, again, this is where it comes back to paradigm. Okay, so recently, um, so you guys, if, if, you've this, if you've joined me before, you've heard me talk about the Essenes calendar, okay? The Essenes were a people. And they lived in Israel at the time that Jesus was on the earth. They were, they lived there before there's evidence that they were, you know, in this particular area called Qumran, at least a couple hundred years before Jesus lived. Okay. So they lived during the time of the second temple, but they chose to live out to the, to the South outside of Jerusalem in this area of Qumran. And if you know, uh, I don't know what it was 70, 80 years ago, the scrolls, the Qumran, the Dead Sea Scrolls, because Qumran sits right on the Dead Sea, right along the Dead Sea. So the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. Those scrolls are believed to be from the Essenes. They had written, and basically it just confirms the Old Testament. The books of the Old Testament are written here and some other writings. And so I've studied that a bit. And when I learned about the, the calendar the Essenes followed, um, I shared this the other day that on Tuesday that what they looked at was they said, when is the vernal equinox, which by the way, just happened Tuesday evening in central time U S like 10 something central evening. Uh, so yesterday was the first day today. We are in the second day of the first month in my opinion. 
So according to the Essenes calendar, they used the vernal equinox and then the, the year always started on a Wednesday, period. And that's what they, that's what they followed. Okay, so I, I though, like this person asking the question, had always had studied and, and you know, had heard this, this, this um, teaching or understanding around trumpets, right? So the first day of the seventh month of the calendar, in me yeah i got a call so that's kind of a mess i'm back can you guys hear me all right so um praise god for fasting ronaldo dada um heather white what does that mean though all right so the only help i ever had in trouble was my mom oh honey all right praise the lord zadox yeah okay i'm just yeah Lord. I'm just reading comments right now. Praise the Lord. So no, 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 I'm reading some of the comments. Okay. So Jesus is the King of us, is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and he's the Messiah. Okay. He lived 2000 years ago. And I encourage you to get the Bible and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read those four gospels. Read the story of Jesus. He was born to a woman, Mary, but his father was Father, God, Holy Spirit, okay? He was man made God, God made man on the earth. He was our savior. He came and he lived and he died and he rose again. That is who Jesus Yeshua is that I'm talking about, okay? Praise the Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Okay. Praise the Lord. So, um, Zadox, yes. So there's some. So Zadok, the Melchizedek, the royal priesthood. Uh, Zadok actually is actually uh, uh, also as a part of Jupiter, the planet. What we call Jupiter, the king planet. It's actually the it's the planet of Zadok. Okay, all so that ties back into um, the stars and the signs and all of that. Um, Elias' calendar will never change. He's established it forever. Amen. So God, I'm, I'm not suggesting that God's calendar has changed in any way. I'm saying our understanding of God's calendar. That's all. I've been pursuing after what is God's calendar? What is his calendar? What is the truth of his calendar? Okay. So I was taught, Feast of Trumpets, that it's the festival that no one knows the day or hour because you're not sure when the sliver of the moon will appear. Okay. And that made sense to me. I'm like, okay, I get that. Right. And that's a reference back Leviticus 23. And there's other scriptures that talk about the appointed times of God. So I was like, okay, that makes sense to me. You know, trumpets, the last trump is when Jesus will return on the clouds. We will rise to meet him. The bride will go. He will go out to battle. Um, so that was my paradigm. All right. So my set of thinking. So let me release to you a, a little bit what I'll go into in this teaching in a little bit that I'll upload later. So that question of being taught that the first day of the new year starts on the new moon, um, which is the spring. So this person was asking about, you know, the, the first day of the first month, Nissan, right? What we call, what is known as uh, Nissan. So this might blow you away. Okay. Cause it was like, wow. So the Lord led me to a teaching someone else did about a month ago. And I was unraveling that with the Lord. And what God's done for me it, many different times so that I have an, I have a paradigm for this. I have an, ex, I accept when the Lord does this is that the Lord will ask me questions. I don't know the answer to, or the Lord will ask me about a specific word. So for example, at one time the Lord said, what, what is, who are the Gentiles? And then he led me down this whole, the whole path of searching out what the real, the Hebrew word or the original word, if it was written in Greek or Aramaic or whatever, what did that word mean? Okay. And what happens is it doesn't always mean the way that it was translated in the King James, right? Or now in any of our Bible versions, the way that something gets translated oftentimes can lose meaning. Okay. So I'm sharing that with you because that the term Gentile is actually the word goy and it was used in even, even the, back in Genesis talking about Abraham and God's promise that he would give him the nations and all that Goy meant was nations never meant non-Jew didn't mean non whatever it meant nations. That's it. It didn't have, it didn't have all these other. So anyway, different teaching. Okay. But 
So there's this word, Kodesh. Kodesh. There's the Feast of Trumpets is called Rosh Kodesh. That's the Rachel's terrible um, pronunciation of, of Hebrew, okay? But Kodesh. So here's the challenge that I want to give present to you, and you can research it out yourself too, right? Um, but this this really helped me. This gave me some some understanding. Because keep in mind, American Christians today or Irish Christians today or wherever you're coming from and listening today, we have a paradigm. We were taught something. So Kodesh, I was taught it meant new moon. Okay. There's actually a word for moon. Um, so the, the word moon is commonly translated month. Okay, that's where we get our word month. And we, so there's moon and month, that becomes month, right? So we can look at the, the moon and think, okay, you know, yeah, it's communicating month. And oh yeah, it communicated month back in Jesus's time. Okay, but here's the challenge. Here's what I, I wanna just present this. And you guys can think about it yourself. But what if the term Kodesh as it's, as it's referenced a gazillion times and almost always translated moon, the new moon or the month, what if it doesn't equal that? What if that wasn't its original meaning? Okay. So, so many scriptures that you probably can't read my hand or any, but whatever, I'm just saying to you this, in this particular teaching, there's all these different scriptures or I'll give you one for example. Um, 1 Samuel 20, 15, where it's translated as new moon, okay? Or Exodus 12, 1 and 2, it's translated as month. So this word Kodesh, okay? So the question is, what if Kodesh doesn't really mean moon translated to month? Um, what if it means something different? And, and let me just maybe a little bit, and again, I hope I'll go into this more in the teaching. And there's other other references then that this other teacher did that were super helpful, even looking back into Josephus in his writings. Um, Philo, this book, Philo on the Creation, um, kind of these other writers, like, and, and the, why would you reference back to these, you know, writings that happened around Jesus's time or just after, you know, 2000 years ago? Like, what was the common understanding then? Because I think, what what does the enemy do? He comes to deceive. He comes to, he doesn't have to eliminate something. He just has to twist it. And I, I have a sense in my heart, that's what's happened. We've lost the common understanding. We've lost what was a common understanding and we're, Cam, oh, religious stuff boring. All right, praise the Lord. Yeah. So I want, I want to say, I'm not religious, I love the Lord. I have worked in my own heart a long time to come out of religion because religion is of man. I want to come back to knowing my creator. I'm a created being. I'm not a mistake. And he, the Lord God created everything. He spoke the world into existence, the universe the one verse he spoke it into existence and i want to come back to an understanding of who the creator is and then his plan for all of salvation that has happened that has come his plan that has come for all of salvation to come to man through jesus yeshua i want to understand that and from that context i can know who i am and I can trust him to restore all things according to his ways and his purposes. We're living at the time of the end of this age, the start of the age to come. So the, the books that were sealed are becoming unsealed. This is the time for us to have a restoration of understanding of God's ways. That's why we look up to his story in the stars. So what if, so the, the whole thing is that, just so we're aware, the lunar month, is 29.53 days. Now, isn't that, isn't that interesting? So 29.53 times 12 equals 354.36. Does not equal 364 point whatever days that the 
that the earth rotates around the sun, right? So the lunar month, so it, it doesn't, it, it, we know that God, God could have made it perfectly to do that, but he didn't, he did something different. So he did it for a purpose, but it wasn't, it wasn't to communicate that, that month thing. Um, and I know that, so, so the first thing just to challenge and question is to say, okay, all these scriptures that talk about the Kodesh, if it doesn't mean lunar moon or moon month, what does it mean? What does it mean? You know, does it mean something else? So what the Lord's done in me is, first of all, caused me to challenge, could it be that that understanding is mistranslated, is misunderstood? That understanding of Kodesh is misunderstood. And if it is, what is it really truly pointing to? And so this is where I come back to astronomy is the study of the stars from God's perspective. That's the approach I take. God, scripture says God named the stars. He did that. And across all civilizations, the groupings of the stars have held. How could that not be God? Because man doesn't come to agreement on anything. But to look up and see a mass of stars and just see all the stars and go, let's group them like this. And then let's assign this meaning. And that they've held across generation. This is going back thousands of years through the Chinese records. They are, they are the same. Come on, only God could do this. There's times where you have to say like, how can we not believe that there's a God? This is just one example, but it's amazing. So you look up and you look at the groupings of stars that mean the same thing across all cultures. They grouped in the same way. You go, wow, that's probably pretty incredible. What is he communicating? So the only calendar that would be accurate for how we actually measure time today on our planet would be the Earth, our relationship to the sun, and the stars, right? Because we know in our deep within us across all humanity that the year is set by how long it takes us to go around the sun. The position of the sun in the heavens is something that is unchanging today. I want to be careful because there's evidence to say that 6,000 years ago, the start of the year, the position of the sun, sun in one constellation has actually shifted. Okay? According to God's perfect timepiece. But what if, like right now, and this is why I wanted to be able to show you Stellarium, because today, looking from Jerusalem, when I pull up Stellarium, I always put my location as Jerusalem, because that is, Israel is God's, timepiece. It's like the center of the clock. And looking east, we know that Jesus will return from the east. We know that the sun and the moon rises from the east and sets in the west. So that's why I look I look east. So every day, I'll look at this. I don't do it every day. But today, like when I looked at Stellarium, the sun, so we, I just told you the vernal equinox happened. So according to the scene's calendar, that's the marker. The first Wednesday after that, it happened that it happened on a Wednesday. So that's the starting the first day of the new year, according to the Essenes calendar. The sun is coming into Pisces, the start of the year. So the first sign that the sun moves through is Pisces. Thanks for your hearts. Praise the Lord. Thanks for your hearts and your encouragement. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because this is important. This is important. And I thank you. Thank you, Father God, for strengthening us to stand against all the persecution that comes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the faithful people in here to, to be praying for what the Lord is saying and praying against the attacks that are coming. Praise the Lord. So the sun is coming into Pisces. That So that's the sun. We look up and we see where the sun is and the, the new year has begun. Now what will happen is that as we watch the sun, from our perspective, the earth's perspective, where God placed his people. That's why we look. We can only look and see an ancient the ancient people 6000 years ago that would look up into the heavens and see what was happening they were they were outside they would this they, their lives were lived according to what the sun was doing 
Where was the sun? What season were they in, right? And so we watch the sun move through the constellations. And what happens is the sun's position goes through one of the 12 constellation groupings. There's 12 constellation groupings and the sun moves through it perfectly. And that's what a year is. So what I'm saying to you is challenging our paradigm and our way of thinking around this translation or potential mistranslation of the original word Kodesh to instead have an understanding of what if it instead meant what they would observe, what we can still observe today, that the sun is in Pisces. And then in a month from now, the sun will move to Aries. And then in a month from now, it will move to Taurus. And da, 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 da. Right? I, I'm looking over here because I don't have all the constellations in the exact order they're memorized. Um, so that is my, that's my, what I wanted to release to you to, to consider. And then I'm going to work on a teaching that I'll go into some detail if you're interested where I can pull up solarium and then pull up some of the original, this looking at this word Kodesh, this other word Yerak, which has been translated as lunation, lunation, which is that moon in the cycle of 29.53 days and go into it. Okay. So, so what I'll, I'll end today, this by saying is that right now, I'm just going to look at Solarium. So this morning, what's happening is if you're looking from Jerusalem East, all of the other planets are lined up. It doesn't mean they're in conjunction where they're like boop, 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 but there are several planets in conjunction, conjunction today, Saturn, Neptune, and Venus are all in conjunction right now, which that means they're like boop, 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 where it looks like you, you take one bright light in the heavens and it, they, the three move together and they become one and you can only see one. But literally there is a line with the sun in the middle right now. This is happening. If, like, so why is that interesting to me? So last fall, the Lord showed this to me and I began talking about it and sharing about it because for a few years, the Lord's been pointing me to the heavens. And so I'm telling you, it matters for some reason. Like the Lord's just not saying, I really, you know, Rachel seems bored. I think I'll, I think I'll put these things on her heart and give her something to do, something to investigate. Like, no, the Lord doesn't work like that. He's doing things. Like he has a purpose for the things that he shared with me. I have binders of things the Lord shared with me over the years. And he always has a purpose. And I, and I, am convicted that I recognize I, I have not ever put enough weight on what he's saying and what he's released. I'm endeavoring to do that today, right? To say, Lord, I'm going to give you my first fruits. I'm going to, whatever you stir on my heart, I'm going to share and release. And so this is the message happening today. What's amazing is that the world is taking notice. So I'm curious, the person living in Ireland, if you're still on, um, you know, in America, like this upcoming April 8th, solar eclipse is a really big deal. Secularly and for believers, it's a really big deal. People are taking notice. And in fact, like um, our military, our National Guard is is um, preparing, like, which is crazy. Like, I don't know, what do they think is going to happen? So yes, it's a sign. Six and a half years ago, we had the other solar eclipse on September 23rd, 2017. During the fall feasts of the Lord, God every, does everything according to his timing. It was important then. It's important now. This is happening during this, the timing of the spring feasts of the Lord, right? Actually, this will, um, let me pull up my, my, uh, my calendar a moment. So on, um, praise the Lord. It would be the timing just after, according to the Essenes calendar, um, the first month, the first day of the first month happened on Wednesday, yesterday. So that 14th day later, um, Passover is Tuesday, April 2nd, according to the, to the Essenes calendar. Saturday, April 6th is Jesus' resurrection. Sunday is the morrow after the Sabbath. And then there's this period of time before Shavuot or Pentecost, which is um, May 27th. So 
just after the, the spring feast, this solar eclipse over America happens. And so at the same time, I'm saying to you that the Lord was pointing last fall to this alignment of planets, this lineup of planets. So looking from Jerusalem East, your Uranus, Jupiter, Mercury, then you see the sun, then you see, then, then right now this conjunction of Saturn and Venus and Neptune and then Mars. So if you don't know, if like this is the first time you're hearing me talk about this, that all of the planets, so God spoke the universe into existence, he set the planets, right? The, si the, the stars in the heavens. The, the stars don't move. The planets, all that term means, it means wandering star, the wandering star. So he set the planets. Now that we can see with our equipment and all this kind of stuff, we have programs like Stellarium that can tell us what's going on because it's all timed. But all of the, each of the planets has a different orbital period around the sun. And so at any given time, they're anywhere across all of the heavens. They could be anywhere. Right now, in the spring of 2024 of the Gregorian calendar, they're all in the same one-fourth quadrant of the heavens. Boop, boop, boop. The sun in the center and the sun in Pisces. So on April 8th, that continues. That's the moon is also there. That's why we have a solar eclipse, the sun and the moon. The moon is perfectly positioned to the earth. That's why we, we have this effect of the shadow moving across the earth. And it's moving across all of America, you know, through all of the Nineveh cities and across the New Madrid fault line, right? Forming the X, like only the Lord could do all this. So yeah, we better take notice. Okay. So there's a line happening and to me, what the Lord showed me, because I had had this angelic visitation I've talked to you guys about, where I saw first an open vision. So the angel comes and stands. I have this open vision, and, the Lord, and then the angel talks to me, okay? So during this experience, I this V came down from heaven, and there were two coins with faces that moved in from each side, and the V was in the middle. And this happened in 2017. So it's now been seven years ago that this happened in January. So just over seven years. Uh, for all that time, all those years, I didn't know what the V meant. I didn't understand the V. I knew there was an application to the, the upside down pyramid, the Illuminati, that whole thing, that demonic symbology and the currency. I knew that those things were connected, but I didn't understand the V. And then last fall, the fall of 2023, actually it was like late summer, I saw a program, I happened across a program that actually is a simulation of the, or it's showing two things. It either shows the earth at the center and what it looks like, or it shows the sun at the center with the earth going around and what it looks like. And, and the Lord said like to my heart, do you see? And I saw this V forming in the planets and that's happening right now. The planets are lined up in the heavens. They look like a line, but if you were to like look down, you would see that the sun is in the center and all the planets go boop, 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 out from it. And so last fall, I was like, when this happened, I told my husband, I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Look at this. Because he's known, he's heard me talk about this for all these years. And I began sharing this, you know, on YouTube, like, okay, this is important. So not only are the planets going to be in this, this one part of the sky, which how often would that ever happen? Okay, so I couldn't find it. I couldn't find resources. So I put it into chat GPT, AI, Abaddon and Habits. Might as well use it for something good. So I put it in there and it, it came back with, I asked the question many different ways. It came back with anything from, you know, once in a lifetime to every 19 billion years to every 32 billion years, because it's not... It's, it's the planets being in these. So the planets are all in these, these three, Aries, Pisces, Aquarius. They're all in these three constellations, three of the 12, okay, right now. And again, if I'm saying to you, the Lord has set the stars in the heavens and he's got a perfect plan and he, each of those constellations has a meaning. We just lost it. So what he's been doing with me has been teaching me, teaching me, through revelation, through his word, and also through this historical books about the lost understanding of what these things mean. So 
this, what I came to understand was that God's story, just like God wrote his story in our Bible, from Genesis to Revelation is God's story. And all his story of having a people and what those people would do and those people would be scattered across the earth and those people would be um, saved through Jesus and those people would then be regathered at the time of the end. Now, like we're, come, here, here's what I believe. Because a friend messaged me the other day and was like, okay, Rachel, like what is going on with April 8th? Like is, is this, um, you know, is just like everything going to end or what? And, I'm, and that's, those are my words, not hers, but it was kind of that gist of that. And I'm like, here's what I believe. That God is good to tell us what's going to happen before it happens. He said that's what the purpose of the signs in the heavens. Um, we all see in part. Only the Lord knows for sure everything that's going to happen. But he tells us what will happen before it will happen. So we'll believe and we'll be prepared in our hearts, more importantly than any other prep you could ever do. And so what do I believe? I believe that we're seeing the culmination of things that he's been speaking to me for 10 years. And I'm just one person. There's lots of other prophetic voices. And I want you to know I never set out to be a prophetic voice. I didn't say, Lord, please, I'd like to be a prophetic voice. No, it didn't work like that. I said, Lord, I love you and I want to follow you. And I care, I care about what you're doing. And I ask you to use me. And then he's like, okay, your daughter. <laughs> Here you go. I'm going to give you some stuff. And then, by the way, it's kind of heavy. And, uh, but I'm going to give you the grace. And I'm going to give you time to get your own head and heart around it. And then I'm going to give you the boldness. This is all through him. I'm going to give you the boldness to speak what I'm speaking. And so I want to do that right now. I just want to give the Lord the opportunity to speak. He's put the signs in the heavens to herald the time we're living in. All of the sun and all the planets are perfectly positioned to communicate a story. The constellations each communicate something. And if you can read, it's like if you were blind, but you wanted to learn to read, we have this dot system, right? More, uh, I was going to say Morris code. No, no. The dot system. What's it called? Somebody help me. Boop, 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 boop. So I'm blind and I'm feeling dots. Someone has to teach me what those dots mean in order for me to be able to read. Braille. Thank you. Thank you for helping me out. Can you say Nova? Praise the Lord. Nova. Okay. So Braille is what we're talking about. Uh, yeah. Not Morse code. But that's like beep, 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 beep. That's the sound. Not, but I was thinking, okay. So anyway, so he's got to teach us. So here's what's happened. The pe the ancient people, Enoch, for example, who walked with God and was no more because he walked with the Lord to such a degree that he disappeared from the earth. That's what I believe. Like, they had an understanding. We've just lost it. So God has to reestablish the understanding of what he's doing. And that's part of why I'm sharing this stuff with you is because this matters to the Lord. So he's saying, I've been pointing to this V. It's forming now. The angel that came two years in a row in January 2016 and January 2017 what he did. I, I, he, the angel didn't give me this, you know, million pages download. He was very specific. Okay. In other encounters, I have received scrolls that were downloaded into my heart. I have received, um, many times scrolls into my, like received and all that. But the, in these encounters with the angels, the angel didn't stand there and talk with me for days. It was a very, these were very brief encounters. The angel appeared and said these words, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Okay, scriptural. He said to me, you have been called to see what is coming on the earth. Tell them what is coming. That's what I'm doing right now, right? I'm telling you. It's important and it matters. And what I have seen coming on the earth is multiple layers, but I believe with my heart that the first two scrolls, sorry, the first two seals of the book of the Lamb from Revelation 5 are open. 
the white horse was released. This is what I believe. Um, Pastor Terry Bennett from Tennessee. Melanie's on here, um, who's a part of his congregation. Maybe Sarah, maybe you are as well, I don't know. Um, the angel Gabriel came to him. Jesus himself came to him. And so in October of 2022, and in April of 2023, the first seal was opened, the second seal was opened. So it's now been coming up on a year. And in this encounter with the angel, the Lord said, I heard the voice of the Lord, and he said this to me. I'm raising up the Josephs. So the first is the promise of his plan. And then the second part is, he said, the date the famine begins is January 16. Doesn't get any clearer than that. He chose to speak to me according to the calendar that I understood at the time. This was in 2016. And then in 2017, the same angel came and stood with this message. So here we are, all these years later, seven and eight years later, last fall, the Lord began to show me this V forming in the heavens, the V from the vision that I had, the coins. So here are elements. I don't know the timing exactly. Of So interesting. Praise the Lord. You know, the, 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 the so I bless you, Howie X. I bless you. I bless you in Jesus' name. I bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I bless you. So you must be bored today, but I'm really glad God brought you into to what we're talking about. I bless you and pray that you come to know the truth of Jesus. He's so good. So the elements of my understanding are the layers. I'm just kind of picturing and I'm ordering my words because they're really important. Thank you, Lord. Because the second seal, which is the force of war, has been released, there's an element of war. For years, the Lord's been talking to me about war coming, World War III, how World War III would begin, it coming upon our country. He said, it won't just be a war across the seas. It will be a war here. It will be even a war neighbor to neighbor. So elements of what I've seen, I've seen this division coming. And what is a V, this point? Division coming. It's the coins. So I've seen a division coming. And the Lord's spoken to me about a division coming first internally within our country. So we can feel it. We can sense it. We know the enemy works that way to bring division. We know the Lord allows it for his purposes. So there is a division because the Lord is coming for a bride that's made herself ready. This sign happening over America, it is a sign of redemptive judgment. Many of God's people live in America as they do across all the earth. All of his people, the remnant of Israel that were scattered all across the earth. And so he's going to use the shakings that are coming, the redemptive judgment, to cause his people to come out of all the lands they're living in and to return to himself. The shakings are going to include internal strife, even to the point of state versus state, even to neighbor and neighbor. It will include the, what we know is coming, World War III. Is that Rachel's heart? No, of course not. It's got it's 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 what's coming on the earth. The horse of war has been released. War is coming. And we know that the two coins speak of the economic shift, the economic system shift that's happening. Okay, the economic system shift. The Libra, the scales being weighed in the balance. Two pennies for wheat, barley, don't harm the oil in the wine, right? That scripture, this economic system shift. And then famine, 
right? So these elements, these are these these are really hard. But at the same time, what I want to say to you, and yes, I agree with you. He's dividing the wheat from the tares, and he spoke to me about that so so well. So all is well, and I want to I want to just speak to that. So praise the Lord. I really didn't intend to go into any of this today. So praise God. We just trust Him. What He's having me do is I'm about my Father's business. So. I'm tucking in with him. I'm trusting him. I'm loving him. I'm listening for him. And then I'm like, Lord, use me on the earth today. However, and so I'm, I'm building a company with the Lord called Foley. Like I'm building a company. That doesn't make any sense. Like Rachel, if you really believe all these things are coming, why are you doing that? Why are you building this company that releases heavenly oil? Because the Lord said to, because it matters to the Lord, because He's always doing lots of things. There's what the enemy's doing in all of his plans. And then there's what God's doing and not even a response, but it's like God wrote the end from the beginning. There are no surprises or tucked in his bosom. The Psalm 91, read it over yourself. So we, that whole like occupy till he comes, it's a real thing. And that, like I said to you earlier, let's be people that are advancing his kingdom, not shrinking back, waiting for, the judgment to come and the the end the plans of the enemy to come the next pandemic the next whatever you know release of biotoxins and all that crap like yep the enemy's busy steal, stealing killing and destroying nothing new under the sun right but god is busy and he has promises for us i shared with you the other day like his the latter rain the outpouring of holy spirit is coming in the first month will it be this month or will it be a subsequent year i don't know Will World War III begin this fall or in a subsequent subsequent year? I don't know. The famine, will, however it's going to happen, I trust what the Lord said to me. I know that I know that I know. It's okay if you don't. It's okay if you're like, I don't know what this lady's talking about. It's okay. And I can be wrong. He's never wrong. I could be wrong. And I don't have a reputation anymore. I've laid that down because I'm just his. I am not who you see before you. This is not who I am blonde white girl in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm a daughter of the King. I'm a bride of Christ. That's who I am. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Come on. That's who you are. This is just the body I inhabit. I'm a spirit in a body with a mind. I was a spirit. I will always be a spirit. I'm a spirit eternally. This body is a physical body that will pass away. It is temporary, temporal. I am eternal in him. And I'm either going to be with him eternally or I'm going to be separated from him eternally. That's what the word says. And as for me and my house, we have resolved the matter in our heart. We are going to be with him. That's who I am. So this world holds me not. And I will tell you, there is freedom in that. There is freedom in knowing this is all going to pass away. So it's okay to grieve the life you thought you were going to have in the years ahead. It's okay. I've had a chance to do it. But then let us be about our father's business. Lord, let us be, be excited for what is coming. Lord, show me my place in that. All of you listening have a place in his kingdom. Should you choose it? And you do that by laying down your own life. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my savior. Lord, I can do nothing without you. I am a poor, sinful being apart from you. But let me take on your nature. I submit my life unto you. Make, make you Lord over my life. I come under your kingdom. Do a work in me, Lord, to give me a new heart. Re re remove my stony, cold, dead heart. And then set me into my destiny. Heal my heart so the enemy has no place in it. And let me be about my father's business. That's where we're at. So we have every reason to be encouraged. That is what God is doing right now. That is what God is doing right now. That's the ultimate. So, yep, signs in the heavens, some really hard stuff coming. Boop, boop, boop. Redemptive judgment. Doesn't mean it's all going to happen on April 8th. This sign in the heavens begins to break at the end of May. So this line, the planets are all coming into a closer and closer V. And then they're going to begin to disband. So it could be that the sign comes and then these things happen, right? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, guys. I'm just reading through your comments right now. Praise the Lord. We just trust you, Lord. We just trust you, Lord, in all you're doing. Thank you for joining me. All right. Praise the Lord. God willing, I'm going to re release this teaching later today. Um, where if you're interested in like seeing this and some of the scriptural references of things I spoke about today, join me. All right. Bless you guys. Thank you. Bless your day. Jesus is the King. The King is Lord. Thy kingdom come. Build your temple in us, Lord. Righteous and holy and set apart unto you.